Clark family, it's Nicole Swart, your executive director here on the Franklin campus, and you had asked for more communication from us regarding what is going on each week with regulations, things we can do, things we can't do, and things coming around the bend. So here is your first uh, weekly rendition of the top five things that you need to know this week, and we will play these starting every Tuesday at 2 o'clock. So you'll get to see these a few times uh, throughout the week on repeat. So hopefully you'll have a chance to get all of your questions answered. And if you have additional questions that aren't answered, please feel free to reach out to me and we'll make sure that you get, uh, we'll get those satisfied. So number one thing that you need to know is we're really excited to share that First United Methodist Church, their kids are going to come around the building, so around the exterior of the building, and do a Halloween parade for us on Halloween Day. So there are more details to come, but we're hearing there's 50 families that will be involved in this, doing a very safe and uh, socially distant Halloween, but we'll get to see the kids in all of their costumes, um, have some, some way hand out candy, um, and just have a really fun day on Halloween. So we're really excited about that. Um, another update that we want to give a little more clarity around is uh, this past week Friday, we put out some information regarding a COVID positive case that we have here on the Franklin campus. And we do have a confirmation of three residents in our assisted living memory care and one staff member who worked in our assisted living who are COVID positive. With the new regulations that came out from Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, they now lump our independent living into the facility term. Previously, independent living was looked at as separate than this. So now that it's together, if there's a positive case within the facility as a whole, and so for Franklin, the facility means the, the whole campus, the whole, everything in the big house here. Um, if there's one positive case, then visitation has to cease until there's been 14 days with no new cases. So we know that things kind of happened really quickly then. We were really trying to see if there was a different way that we could go about that, um, but we are being told that there is not, that we, that we are not allowed to do that. We're also, as we continue to do contact tracing, get everybody tested, um, we want to ask that our independent residents only go out for medically necessary appointments. That's going to be important for us to make sure that there's no new onsets of, of COVID during this exceptionally high time. Kent County is reporting numbers um, in the past seven days. Their positivity rate is 4.2%, and that is a lot higher. Um, it was, it's been in the ones and twos in the past several months prior to this. Over the last 30 days, it's been about 3.5% of an average. So you see that there's a big increase over the last 30 days. And since March as a whole, Kent County's positivity rate has gone up to 4.5%. So there's a lot of data out there now that we have access to that we can look at other communities, the colleges, the local schools. And as some of you have, may have seen on the news, there's large outbreaks in some of the major schools surrounding us too. So it's very important that we keep very safe right now, um, especially around younger kids, grandkids, school-age kids, um, there's in, in situations where you would not be wearing a mask or not be socially distant. The regulations for us, we find that are, are changing frequently. So if you are going to go out on a leave of absence or going to be away or just really have questions about your specific situation, we really want you to ask those questions before you go. Or if you're planning to come back from somewhere, um, give us a call about an hour before you come back or a day before you come back so we can make sure that we're providing you with the latest and most up-to-date information on the guidance as it stands right there. Because that is something that we're seeing and unfortunately we don't have any control over, but we'll make sure that you know as much as we know at that time. It's important for us to remember to wear our masks, to keep six feet distance away, and for those living in different areas of the building, it's very important that we're not crossing over. So for example, I'm standing here in Sherman Street right now, and it's important that I don't go into the manor, that I'm not going to assisted living or, or other areas of the building. Um, we're trying to keep people together because if there's a positive case and people are commingling in different areas, 
then there's the potential for an increased spread there. So we're asking that people are not commingling different areas at this time. Um, give us a couple of weeks until we, we um, understand the current situation here in its full entirety. Make sure there's no new onset of COVID cases. And then we'll look at modifying um, what, our, what our regulations are um, that we have to abide by, by Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. At this time, we are looking at the pool and the fitness center to be very low risk activities. We are not required to close them down in this situation, so we are going to keep them open for the time being. So if you are somebody who likes to use the fitness center, um, likes to use the pool, we encourage you to continue to use those um, safely with the precautions that are in place from Kenzie. If you have questions, there's things that you want to know, please feel free to reach out and we'll make sure that you get, uh, get all the answers. So I'm Nicole, your executive director here at Franklin, and these are the top five things that we want you to know this week. Have a great week.